Hello everyone, in this video I will try to put this into this. Okay, okay, I know it sounds a bit weird, but let me explain. So, in the left I have an RFID card. I use this card to get into my apartment complex, nothing special. In the right I've got an old CPU, which is Intel Pentium E2160. I got few of these laying around and I don't have any use cases for them, but I can't throw them away either. So I made a brief research and found out that people are turning those into keychains. That is obviously brutal but at the same time it's kinda cool as well. However, I don't like things that are just for looks. I want them to have a purpose to be functional. So I decided to do the same thing but at the same time I want to embed my keycard into that. So let's get started. First to make operations and test with RFID chips I got this module. It is called RC522 module and it is used to communicate with the RFID chips via an Arduino. It also came with a keychain and the keycard so that is cool as well. It's all nice but when I tried to hook up to my Arduino Leonardo it didn't work. So I've tried many configurations and it turns out to be that I must use the ISCP header on Leonardo. After configuring it that way it finally worked. So I made the wirings a bit more tight and bolted the module into the Arduino. That way I have a compact package which is easier to work with. Now let's look at how it reads the RFID chips. As you can see I have an example sketch opened right here. This example is from the MFRC522 library which you can find the link in the description down below. As the name suggests, this dump info script dumps info from our RFID chip. It is already uploaded to my Arduino, so let's look at how it works. To have a basic understanding of RFID chips, we need to know three terms. Sector, block and address. Let's start off with sectors. They are basically divided storage chunks inside an RFID chip. Depending on the size of the card, number of sectors may vary. Since I am using a 1K card, I have 16 sectors in my case. Then inside of each sector we have blocks, and they are just subsections of the sectors. In our example, each row corresponds to a single block. Then we finally got addresses, and they are the smallest locations that we can put data on. They each correspond to a single byte so we can give data ranging between 00 to FF in hex. It is all cool, but how it relates to putting it into a CPU? Well, to put an RFID chip into a CPU, first we need to copy it into a keychain. And that's because the coil inside the card is too large to fit inside our tiny CPU. But the key fobs have smaller coils so we can put one into the CPU. Anyway, to copy data from one chip to another, all we had to do is copy addresses one by one between each other. It is simple, right? Wrong. See, the most RFID cards have a thing called manufacturer block. It is located at sector 0 and block 0. It is a unique card identifier and in most cards it is locked. Because I have learned that in some places it is actually illegal to clone RFID cards, so be sure to check your local laws before attempting to clone a card. But that said, it means that we won't be able to change the block zero. However, it is the only thing that we need to clone because my apartment card validates the user by using only this line. After figuring that out, I decided to order some writable tags but they turned out to be on a lower frequency range so they are not compatible. At that point, I am very frustrated because I won't be able to clone my card. But on the bright side, I can come up with an alternative. See, RFID is obviously much more than just opening doors. As a result, I decided to make a fancy business card, which opens up a website or in my case my YouTube channel when it is scanned. To do that, we need to write our channel URL to our tag, but doing that on Arduino requires converting each letter from my channel URL to a single byte, and that is kinda boring and time consuming at the same time. So I leave my Arduino aside and decided to move on with my NFC capable phone. It gives me flexibility to use apps which saves a lot of time. After a fair bit of research I have downloaded two apps. One is called NFC Tools and the other one is called MeFair Classic Tool. So let's look at how do we use it. First I open up the NFC Tools. Inside that I go to a write option and choose to add a record. There as you can see we got a lot of options. But for our use case I choose the URL and paste my channel URL in it. 
then I hit OK and tap right. And when I tap my tag into the phone, and voila, it wrote URL to the tag. And once I have quit my application and tapped my tag once again, it opens up the URL, which is really cool. But how it looks as a data? To find it out, let's switch over to our next tab, and there we can hit read option, present our tag, and tap the start mapping and read. After a while, it will show the contents of our tag. And as you can see, we got some data in the sector 1. So if we copy that and paste it into a hex to ASCII converter, there we go, we got the channel URL. Now comes the best part, cracking open the tag and embedding our chip into the CPU. So let's do that right now.